One of the things that World of Warcraft does well to draw back players with each major expansion or content patch are the new zones. Now with level boosts, heirlooms, and level scaling, it's possible to miss a ton of diverse areas and zone-specific story quests. The latest patch 8.2 is no exception. While Nashatar was the main focus and larger zone, my favorite area introduced in quite some time has to be Mechagon. It's a huge scrapyard where body-enhancing gnomes have split into two factions. You aid the Rust Belt Resistance and Prince Erasmin against King Mechagon, who leads gnomes and mechs that have lost their humanity as they kept upgrading. The intro involves Tinkmaster Overspark, a popular gnome leader, gaining access to the Lost City, along with his gnome companions, one of who is able to sneak in her partner, a filthy goblin. I must say, Grizzak, your outfit is quite, uh, peculiar. It's How you the, doing? uh, radiation poisoning, right, sweetie? Right, uh, radiation from Nomaragon, where I am definitely from. This next quest also involves a gnome, this time Kelsey Steelspark. In this mission, you are searching for Kelsey and Matthias Shaw, who have gone missing while trying to spy on a meeting of Horde leaders. What made me laugh out loud was the fact that these two are supposed to be masters of espionage and gathering intel, while their cover are these crappy little prop trees. Of course their plan doesn't go well and you are tasked with helping them out. World of Warcraft is at its best when its humor and charm are built into quests like these. Even the quest's name, Shaw's Shank Redemption, is spot on. It's Shaw. Matthias Shaw. In another war campaign quest, you work together with the Horde to break Torn leader Bane Bloodhoof out of captivity after he goes against the Horde leader Sylvanas. There are a few quests like these in the war campaign that provide a dungeon feel while playing solo, but this is the best so far. You have Jaina and Shaw as your companions, and are even joined by Thrall and Sorfang during the second half. While not difficult, it does simulate a dungeon and raid environment with multiple stages for the boss fight, and satisfying cutscenes that make these quests feel really polished. You destroy the focus pistols. Escape these halls! Murlocs have always been weak and unassuming creatures I felt bad for killing because they seemed so cute. In Nashatar, the underwater-themed city wouldn't be complete with some murlocs. In this quest, you find a poor, beat-up murloc that you must escort back to your base. After saving him or her, it recovers and brings more friendly murlocs to your camp, opening up shop. You can't communicate well with it and you are given a quest line that requires you to purchase random supplies from these new murlocs. The names and the purpose of these items are as weird as you would expect, and why murlocs prize these objects as anything of value is anyone's guess. This quest I believe is from the War Campaign from 8.1, where you are given information on the whereabouts of the trade Prince Gallywix, a member of the Horde leadership. You therefore go on this mission to kill him, but not before he escapes into a portal. The portal leads into a place called the Pleasure Palace. Since he is a greedy, fat slime ball that profits off others, his Pleasure Palace is like a luxury golf resort. Hmm, who does this remind me of? One of the quests you complete while you're here is sabotaging and killing guests enjoying themselves at this resort. You eventually reach Prince Gallywix, but after you defeat him, it turns out to be an imposter in a fake suit, and the real Prince Gallywix flies off in a ship. My favorite quest lines of this expansion has to be those for unlocking allied races. While time consuming and requiring you to log in daily to form reputation with these factions, these quests to welcome the new allied races to your alliance don't disappoint. For the Dark Iron Dwarves, you need to get exalted with the 7th Legion, which is probably the easiest of all factions since you gain rep for quests related to the war campaign and any quests in Zandalar. The Dark Iron Dwarves, for anyone who has played Vanilla WoW, are a race of dwarves that lived in Black Rock Mountain in the service of Ragnaros the Fire Lord. The quest takes you back to Black Rock Mountain to use the Black Anvil. While the Dark Iron Dwarves are now joining the Alliance, there is still a group of radical Dark Iron Dwarves led by this guy, High Justice Grimstone, who still hopes to resurrect Ragnaros, and you could even see the top of Ragnaros' head in the background.
The quest line to recruit the Coltirians into the Alliance is equally as satisfying. Your mission is to help Jaina build a new ship and find a crew to present to King Anduin. The quest has you returning to the three different factions within Coltiris that you previously united to get help to build and to man the new vessel. Not only are the missions diverse, but you also meet Dorian Atwater, who is a master shipbuilder and commander of the Elements. There's even optional dialogue that has you ask if she is a shaman, but she doesn't even know what that means. At the end of this quest, you are given a choice, out of a few options, of what you want to name the ship. There were only two times during this expansion, and in recent memory, when this game has given me such a permanent choice. And of course, I had to go with Anduin's Wrath. I can think of no grander gesture, Lord Admiral. What is her name? Anduin's Wrath. It certainly sends a powerful message. May her enemies give her a wide berth. I've encountered two occasions with this interaction with a ghost lizard named Johnny. There appears to be a little shrine that looks like this, and when you interact with it your character is almost put into an alternate realm and you see the spirit of Johnny, Loa of Scavengers. It transforms you into a little sword and gives you tasks of carrying out pranks on unsuspecting NPCs, while at the same time trying not to be detected. In this mission you are tasked with leaving a stink bomb for Hemet Nessing Wary, and while he is distracted steal one of his boots. I'm sure there are more shrines scattered around Zandalar for you to find, but they seem to involve messing with members of your own faction. This questline may not be as funny as the others on this list, but it's definitely the strangest and will have some part to do with Nazoth and his part in the upcoming expansion. Nazoth is an old god similar to Cthulhu or yogg saron both of which have already been defeated in previous states of the game. In this questline you find an artifact called Zal Atoth, Blade of the Black Empire, that speaks to you and you feel something evil about his presence from the beginning. You follow the long questline by gathering items and empowering it. Eventually the voice takes the form of an ethereal yeah. void elf who continues to tell you yeah. more quests to complete. You it's end up following so her wishes long. and end up at this cave. Of course it's a trap and Nazoth curses you with an item called Eye of Nazoth. While you have this item you can only see other players and NPCs who also have this curse, as well as hear whispers and specific interactions with Nazoth. You can follow the quest line and remove the curse, but this was another permanent choice that cannot be undone once removed. I kind of regret removing it as I wanted to see the special interactions it would present in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Let me know your favorite quests so far in Battle for Azeroth. Of course these are all from the Alliance side, so let me know some of your highlights from the sports side also. Thanks again for watching, and see you guys again next time.